I'm George Curtis. Welcome to It's Your Law. Each week it's my privilege to bring guests that uh, make us think. They often make me think. Sometimes I agree with them, sometimes I don't, but I always learn something. And from your calls and uh, cat calls, uh, I understand that you learn something now and then too. We like to bring people who make the law, enforce the law, or have something to do with what our laws are supposed to accomplish as social engineering. And we hear mostly from people who are disappointed. Sometimes we have people who really know why they're disappointed and are making some efforts to change things. Today's guest is an author. She's also been a legislator, and she's currently a candidate for the Congress, and her name is Terry McCormick. Welcome to the show. Thank you, George. I'm delighted to be back. Well, it was fun to have you before. I've seen you with different hats. And uh, it was exciting when I found out that you were writing a book. I was very, very curious. So curious, I bought the book. <laughs> and, and I must confess, I haven't had a chance to read all of it. But I probably read two-thirds of it, and it's given me more questions than anything else. But first of all, for people uh, who haven't seen you recently in the public life, let's hear a little bit about Terry McCormick and uh, what got her here. I remember six years in the legislature, wasn't it? Exactly. I self-term limited. I told the people that I would be there for three terms in public office and kept my word to um, uh, to leave the state house. I believe uh, we'll have a, a lot more uh, uh, representation of the people if we did honor uh, uh, term limits. I'm, a, I'm an advocate, and if elected to the United States Congress, I would certainly um, I would certainly push uh, that piece of. Um, knowledge forward. I don't believe we'll get a bill passed to that effect, but I, I think we're, we would need to take a look at how we would um, pull that forward. And even before Terry McCormick, the politician, uh, you're a real person with a real life, a real family. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, you're educated, I think, a bachelor's and a master's degree. Is education your field? I began in international foreign policy, actually, uh, with a political science degree and then taught at the University of Windsor and did uh, pretty extensive research in the Great Lakes with the Great Lakes Commission at the University of Windsor. And uh, thought I was, I was headed to be a policy wonk, a researcher uh, in the United Nations somewhere in the Diplomacy Corps. But um, uh, life was calling me um, to raise a family and move back to the state of Wisconsin where I'd grown up and raised my, uh, my children here. They're all grown, they're all established. Um, uh, Ken and I uh, together have five grown, um, you can't call them children anymore, uh, but we do. And uh, we even have a lawyer in the family, uh, a banker. Kelly just graduated from medical college and is doing a residency in Michigan. Chris graduated from the Medill School of Journalism. You got mom talking here now. Um, she's doing very, very well in, in corporate communications. And our youngest will be graduating from St. Norbert this year, and we're very proud of, of uh, all five of them. Well, it certainly is a, an accomplished and a well-rounded uh, family background, and obviously the parents uh, got some influence on the kids. And I read in one segment of your book that uh, your background is... Uh, Irish uh, farmers <laughs> from Minnesota. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, very determined Scotch-Irish background. Um, uh, my father's uh, dad and his grandfather started the McCormick um, hayrake um, manufacturing businesses in both Chicago and Minneapolis. And uh, yes, there's always a connection if your last name is McCormick and you're a manufacturer in the early 1900s. So yes, we are connected. And I still communicate with, uh, with cousins out in Oregon that are running the McCormick fields where the hardwood timber is uh, that they use to, um, to make the paper for the Tribune. So there is that connection. Um, my mother's family was, was very established in farming after the Civil War. They were given uh, land, as they soldiers were, if you're part of the Union, and established themselves as uh, early pioneers and leaders in their community. So I have a, a long tradition of serving, serving my neighbors through, through um, my heritage. But then, of course, there's a, a little bit of a bucking of tradition in the conservative areas where, where we are, because uh, you jumped in both feet 
as a female in politics. And uh, let's be realistic, uh, there still is some resistance about having uh, women pass laws uh, that uh, must be obeyed by us males, <laughs> isn't there? <laughs> Well, it's, um, uh, it's, it's, it's an interesting paradigm. Um, I've been reading uh, research on the resistance of some women against women, too. So I don't think it's a, a gender on gender. I, th I think uh, we all need to, to really earn our, our place in life, whether or not we, we wear skirts some of the time or, or we don't. And I, I believe I, I learned that lesson best from my grandmother, uh, who is always remain close to me, uh, my grandma Jessie Boyle, who went to business college with, with Charles Lindbergh and uh, was the head of her Grange in, in Minnesota, a very determined first generation Irish American. And uh, she'd often tell me to stay humble in her brogue and keep my head down and to uh, never complain or you'd never, you'd never be able to pick yourself up when you get knocked down and expect it. Well, then you got into politics, and uh, I'm sure that there was some background work and much study before you became a candidate. You seem to, according to the book, have no difficulty in knowing that uh, the Republican Party would be the party of your choice. But then when you got to Madison and saw how sausage was being made, you didn't seem too sure there was a difference. and. Uh, you weren't too sure that anybody should be forced to eat the sausage. <laughs> <laughs> so let's take our first break, and when we come back, uh, we'll talk about some of those experiences of Terry McCormick in Madison, all right? Thank you, yes. We'll be right back. Mm -hmm. 